तव कथा तत्जीवन कविबिरीडित कलम शापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदाथत भुवि गृणंती भूरीदा जना The Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Chapter Two. In the company of devotees, March eleven, eighteen eighty-two. About eight o'clock in the morning, Sri Ramakrishna went as planned to Balaram Bose House in Calcutta. It was the day of Dol Yatra. Ram, Manmohan, Rakhal. Note is there. a beloved disciple of the master later known as swami brahmananda nitya gopal and other devotees were with him m2 came as bidden by the master <clears throat> the devotees and the master sang and danced in a state of divine fervor several of them were in ecstatic mood nitya gopal's chest glowed with the upsurge of emotion and rakhal lay on the floor in ecstasy completely unconscious of the world the master put his hand on rakhal's chest and said peace be quiet this was rakhal's first experience of ecstasy he lived with his father in Kol- in kolkata and now and then visited the master at dakshineswar about this time he had studied a short while in vidyasagar school at shampukur when the music was over the devotees sat down for their meal balaram stood there humbly like a servant nobody would have taken him for the master of the house yam was still a stranger to the devotees having met only narendra at dakshineswar a few days later yam visited the master at dakshineswar it was between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon the master and he were sitting on the steps of the shiva temples looking at the temple of radha kamta across the courtyard the master went into an ecstatic mood since his nephew hridaya's dismissal from the temple sri ramakrishna had been living without an attendant on account of his frequent spiritual moods he could hardly take care of himself the lack of an attendant caused him great inconvenience Sri Ramakrishna was talking to Kali the divine mother of the universe he said mother everyone says my watch alone is right the christians the brahmos the hindus the muslims all say my religion alone is true but mother the fact is that nobody's watch is right who can truly understand thee but if a man prays to thee with a yearning heart he can reach thee through thy grace by any path mother show me sometime how the christians pray to thee in their churches but mother what will people say if i go in suppose they make a fuss suppose they don't allow me to enter the kali temple again well then show me the christian worship from the door of the church another day the master was seated on the small couch in his room with his usual beaming countenance m arrived with kali krishna who did not know where his friend m was taking him he had only been told if you want to see a grogger grogi shop then come with me you will see a huge jar of wine there m related this to sri ramakrishna who laughed about it the master said the bliss of worship and communion with god is the true wine the wine of ecstatic love the goal of human life is to love god bhakti is the one essential thing to know god through jnana and reasoning is extremely difficult then the master said who is there that can understand what mother kali is even the six darshanas are powerless to reveal her the master said again the one goal of life is to cultivate love for god the love 
that the milkmaids, the milkmen, and the cowherd boys of Vrindavan felt for Krishna. When Krishna went away to Mathura, the cowherds roamed about, weeping bitterly because of their separation from him. Saying this, the master sang with his eyes up, turned upward. Just now I saw a youthful cowherd with a young calf in his arms. There he stood by one hand holding the branch of a young tree. Where are you, brother Kanai? He cried. But Kanai scarcely could he utter. Ka was as much as he could say. He cried, Where are you, brother? And his eyes were filled with tears. When Yam heard the song of the masters, laden with love, his eyes were moist with tears. April 2nd, 1882 Sri Ramakrishna was sitting in the drawing room of Keshav Chandra Sen's house in Calcutta. It was five o'clock in the afternoon. When Keshav was told of his arrival, he came to the drawing room dressed to go out, for he was about to call on his sick friend. Now he cancelled his plan. The master said to him, You have so many things to attend to. Besides, you have to edit a newspaper. You have no time to come to Dakshineswar. So, I have come to see you. When I heard of your illness, I vowed green, coconut and sugar to the Divine Mother for your recovery. I said to her, Mother, if something happens to Keshav, with whom shall I talk in Calcutta? Sri Ramakrishna spoke to Pratap and other Brahma devotees. M was seated nearby. Pointing to him, the master said to Keshav, Will you please ask him why he doesn't come to Dakshineswar anymore? He repeatedly tells me he is not attached to his wife and children. M had been paying visits to the master for about a month. His absence for a time from Dakshineswar called forth this remark. Sri Ramakrishna asked him to write to him if his coming were delayed. Pandit Samadhyayi was present. The Brahma devotees introduced him to Sri Ramakrishna as a scholar well versed in the Vedas and the other scriptures. The master said, Yes, I can see inside him through his eyes as one can see the objects in a room through the glass door. Frailokya sang. Suddenly the master stood up and went into Samadhi, repeating the mother's name. Coming down a little to the plane of sense consciousness, he danced and sang. I drink no ordinary wine, but wine of everlasting bliss. As I repeat my mother Kali's name, it so intoxicates my mind that people take me to be drunk. First, my guru gives molasses for the making of the wine. My longing is the ferment to transform it. Knowledge, the maker of the wine, prepares it for me then. And when it is done, my mind imbibes it from the bottle of the mantra. Taking the mother's name to make it pure, drink of this wine, says Ram Prasad and the four fruits of life are yours. Ram Prasad, the note says, the author of the song, it is customary for writers of devotional songs in India to mention their names at the end of their songs. The four fruits of life, note says, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Drink of this wine, says Ram Prasad, and the four fruits of life are yours. The master looked at Keshav tenderly, as if Keshav were his very own. He seemed to fear that Keshav might belong to someone else, that is to say, that he might become a worldly person. Looking at him, the master sang again. We are afraid to speak, and yet we are afraid to keep still. Our minds, O Radha, half believe that we are about to lose you. We tell you the secret that we know, the secret whereby we ourselves and others with our help have passed through many a time of peril. Now it all depends on you. 
Quoting the last part of the song, he said to Keshav, That is to say, renounce everything and call on God. He alone is real. All else is illusory. Without the realization of God, everything is futile. This is the great secret. The master sat down again and began to converse with the devotees. For a while, he listened to a piano recital, enjoyed it like a child. Then he was taken to the inner apartments where he was served with refreshments and the ladies saluted him. As the master was leaving Keshav's house, the Brahma devotees accompanied him respectfully to his carriage. So welcome to the sixth week of the readings and reflections on the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. So far we have seen in the very first chapter that M has narrated his three meeting with Sri Ramakrishna and he explained in the third meeting how his ego was completely crushed by Sri Ramakrishna. And also, M narrates in the first chapter how due to his English education, he was a little hesitant to approach Sri Ramakrishna in the usual manner. So he makes little fun of himself. That, And then he meets the lady, the maid servant, who cleans that place and she was standing outside M's uh, master's room and M, that is Mahendranath Gupta, the author of this book, says that he asked her, is this man inside, Does he has he studied books? She said, what books? Everything is in his tongue, she says. So that was a new information that M had about the saints. And another thing that he noticed in Sri Ramakrishna was his going into ecstasy, which we call Samadhi. So this person attaining Samadhi again and again has never been seen by him. He has not seen earlier. For the first time in his life, he came to Dakshineswar and stood before Sri Ramakrishna and he saw what is Samadhi. When a person attains that state of Samadhi, how he behaves. That he saw it for the first time. So, Yams used to, that is Mahendranath Gupta, used to come to Sri Ramakrishna because he was a school teacher. The weekdays he was very busy with the school. So, he could come only on Saturdays and Sundays. Two days he had holidays. So, he would come to Dakshineswar. Only the two days in a week he used to come. And if any public holiday was there, he used to come. And only four to five years he was with Sri Ramakrishna. And during that time, whatever he heard from Sri Ramakrishna, he would come back to his home and write down in bullet points in his diary. You know, we call it bullet points nowadays. In a diary, if you want to write something, you write bullet down. Even I also note down. Suppose I visit some place, then I come back and write down the bullet points so that later, when you have to write for a blog, then I can know, oh, these are the points that I have to mention that. So the bullet points he used to write down. Later, after a few years, he started meditating on those days of his visit to Dakshineswar. And then, at that time, he used to close his eyes. When he used to meditate, the entire scenery on that day, it was about five years back, for instance, that scene will manifest before his mental eyes. And when the mental eyes are open, immediately he will write down. That means exactly punkanu punkha, like that we say. So every detail, whether the sun was rising, sun was setting, the moon was rising, what was the thiti, and there's such a detailed expression of the situation when you read it, it's wonderful. That's why I say reading Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna must be made into a daily habit with us. 
every day before going to sleep, we should read at least two pages. Enough. Two pages enough. And you are transported to that area and that time in the time scale. So we are 2019, but you may go into that 18, 1860s and like that. So you can see that how wonderful it was. 1880s, M started going to Ramakrishna. And you can see that how he has depicted very faithfully and so nice. <coughs> so these are the things, the introduction we saw in the first chapter. In the second chapter, the first chapter ends with a beautiful expression of Sri Ramakrishna instructing him to come and meet me at Balaram Bose house. That is the instruction he gives. And Mahendranath Gupta, the writer, he says, oh, master, okay. You see, master word is used in English. Nikhilanaji has translated Thakur as master. Of course, in Bengali, master means, there are two meanings are there. One meaning refers to the school teacher. A school teacher is called a master. And so Yam is actually the master, a master Moshai. That is what in Bengali we say. Master Moshai means the writer of the book. And another meaning of the master is the tailor master. So he is also called master. So when you say master, these are the different connotations are there. But in English, there is no problem. So for Americans, there is no such problem. So he straight away put Thakur or Bhagavan as master. And Yam, instead of putting him as a master, he used it as a Yam only. So when Yam is put, that is Mahendranath Gupta. And master means Sri Ramakrishna. That we must understand. Many times, you know, when Bengalis read the book in English, and they say master means whether it is Master Moshai or the Master Sri Ramakrishna. That doubt comes suddenly. So that should not be happening. So when here when we say master in this book's contest, we mean Sri Ramakrishna. And to refer to the author, we'll always say Yam. So it will be easier to understand in our. So what I, what I was referring to is the last time when Yam met Master. Master told him, come and meet me at Balrambu's house. Yam immediately agreed. Okay, sir. Very obediently he said, okay, sir. And he went, he went to the nearest to the gate of the Dachinese temple he went. And then he quietly came back. When he came back, he saw Sri Ramakrishna is singing and walking in that, uh, in that, uh, and that uh, hall attached to Mother Kali's temple. There was a very dim light was burning. And in that, Yam could see from the distance, Master's one side is lighted, another side is shadow. It was such a wonderful scenery. He was looking at it. When he came near, Master looked at him. So he was surprised because he took leave and went away. Suddenly he has come back. So he was surprised that, what's the matter? Like that, he looked at him. He said, Sir, one doubt is there. What is that? I think Balram Bose is a very rich man of Calcutta. And uh, I doubt whether I will be allowed to enter the house. So I will come and meet you here itself. So I won't go to that place. You know, that's also an English education's result. Unless you are invited, you will not enter a house. You know, once I was traveling in South Africa with one devotee. The devotee was driving the car. I was sitting next to him. And while traveling like this, you see, like that we say it's a cavern, Navan, like that it comes, you know. Suppose somebody says, oh, this is Navan. So I know some devotee is staying in Navan. I said, take the car to the devotee's house. Like that I say. So like that I told in one place. So this is called uh, uh, Westville. So I told, hey, the Westville, the devotee used to come, take the car now to his house. Then the, drive, the driving seat, you know, that the devotee is telling me, no, Maharaj, in South Africa, we don't do like that. We must take an appointment. Then only we can go. <laughs> Just like that, you can't dash in. I said, yeah, I never knew that because in Ranchi, mm -hmm. whenever we used to take our vehicle, we just used to dash into, you know, and then go. We don't give pre-information that I'm coming like that. So in India, we don't need to do that. But outside, we have to do that. It's because of English education. English education turns us in many ways, you see. That is how Yam represents here in the gospel. So he told him, I will come and meet you here. That's better. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, no. You will come and meet me there. If anybody stops you, tell 
टेक माई ने हाउ ब्यूटिफुल इट्स आई थिंक दिस इंस्ट्रक्शन इज वेरी नेसेसरी फॉर अस एनी वेयर यू वॉन्ट टू गो यू वॉन्ट टू लिव यूर होम एंड गो एनी प्लेस टेक माई नेम दैट आई रिमेम्बर इमिडिएटली सो यू टेक हिज नेम and everywhere the doors will be open to you no one will say that the doors are closed to you from this we have to learn this way so philosophically if you take it this way then i feel very happy yes i take the master's name and no door can be closed to me anywhere i am welcome so yam came and understanding master's instruction yam came he was allowed inside the house and he went and sat now after coming to balram bos house he saw some other strange things which he has never witnessed in his third visit to sri ramakrishna dakshineswar he was very much surprised at one type of incident what was that he surprised at of course he was surprised as master's ecstasy samadhi but more than that he was surprised master was not at all serious a man who goes into samadhi muhur muhur again and again he was like a child and playing with these young boys like narain rakal and these boys was playing and he was making so merriment and yam could not believe that you know when you think a monk means or a paramansa means he stays in a higher state and he must be very very serious he doesn't even smile at but here he find he is making fun with these boys so that completely changed yam's outlook of master how this paramansa is so nice like this so that is the great shock for him you know cultural shock i should say because he has been seeing some monks or some higher highly level people in that way very serious <laughs> here he finds ramakrishna is very simple and he is making merry and he is talking to them and making fun of yam also he said yam he compared yam with the peacock when you give peacock you know the drug at the particular time next day it will come at the particular time exactly to take another dose and that is what he says so yam started coming to the exchange and he compared yam as a peacock because he has got the dose now so he will be coming every time like that he made fun of him so with all that that is one thing now after coming to balram bos house another great is Uh, event he saw that he had seen master going into samadhi but he could never imagine his own school students they were all narain and rakal they were all that uh, school students and he was the headmaster his own students getting into samadhi by the grace of sri ramakrishna this he could never imagine first time he is seeing how rakal is falling on the ground and he is getting rounding round on the ground he is there and he was surprised to see and rakal is unable to control his ecstasy young boy 16 year old boy going into samadhi and he says he is laying on the floor in ecstasy completely unconscious of the world the world did not exist for him and sri ram krishna seeing rakal's state how nicely he brought him back he went near rakal touched his chest and said peace peace shanti 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 he said that touching his chest and then slowly rakal is coming back to the world and he saw nitya gopal nitya gopal was another great uh, devotee of sri ram krishna that is a young boy he used to come and nitya gopal says his chest glows glowed with the upsurge of emotion when the emotion comes and it will say in your chest as well as on your face when it is said sri ramakrishna's father he was a highly venerated brahman of that village kudiram chatopadhyay and he used to go and take bath in the pond of the kamarpuku village and pond is for everybody you see all the caste people will go and take bath there but then even the other brahmins who are taking bath in the pond 
immediately when they see Kudiram is coming towards the pond, they all will get out of the pond, leaving the entire pond for him alone to take bath. Not because he is a Brahmin caste, he is a very higher caste, so giving uh, respect. That may be there, because in those days, the caste differences were such that there may be there. But then, another thing what the villagers used to say to the other people were, was this, that when they used to see Kudiram, you know, bare body, bare chested man, with only dhoti, half dhoti, with that, with that uh, gamcha, we call it gamcha in Bengal, so putting on the gamcha, he is walking towards the, uh, towards the pond and they see his chest fully reddened, full of emotion and he is taking the name of Narayana. And telling the Narayana's name, his chest has become reddened and that people see that, oh, he's a holy man is coming. So we should not disturb him. So they get out of the pond. So such is the condition of Nitya Gopal. Nitya Gopal glowed with that, with that light. It is a light emanating from, it's called Tejas. In Sanskrit, we call it Tejas. Tejo Mahi, Tejo Si, Tejo Mahi Dehi. One of the Rig Vedic hymn. We teach the children. I used to teach our South African children. Say this every day. It comes in uh, Rig Veda. Tejo Si, Tejo Mahi Dehi. Thou art Tejas. Give me the tejas that I can sustain it in my life. Like that you pray. Tejosi tejo mai dehi. Viryamasi viryam mai dehi. Balamasi balam mai dehi. Ojosi ojo mai dehi. Manyurasi manyum mai dehi. Sahosi saho mai dehi. The seven qualities are there which you pray to the divine within us. So by praying this every day, when I had Diksha, my Guru taught me this. He said, every day during your meditation time, you should pray. I said, whom I am asking this? Give me, give me, I am asking. To whom I am asking? To your inner controller, he said. To your Antaryamin. He who stays within you, the divinity within you, to that you are asking. That means you are now eligible for manifesting these qualities. That's why you have to seek this. When you seek these qualities, then that qualities will automatically manifest in you. So how to manifest this, with these qualities? Tejas. So you have to seek for that. Then it will be, you will be imbibed with that. So, Yam saw here, another important thing is, Ramakrishna not only goes into Samadhi, his disciples, young boys, with whom he was making very... Now they also experience Samadhi. This is something very new to him. So long Yam had not had any Samadhi. That you must understand. Though he is a teacher of these boys, he has not attained. But he looked at them with a very wonderment. And then Rakhal at this time had studied a short while in Vidyasagar school at Shampukur. This Vidyasagar had a great man in Bengal at the time. He had many schools and one of the schools, Shampukur school, Yam was the headmaster and there Rakhal has studied. So he knows. So when the music was over, all the devotees sat down for their meal. Balram, the yajaman of this house, the, the Balram is the owner of the house, he is the master of the house. He is standing like a servant. This is something wonderful that we all have to imbibe, you see. How the Balaram, such a great devotee of master and always standing like a servant. Anything, can you? Can I do some service to you? Like that he's standing. All the devotees are seated and they are all taking food at one place. Only in those days, you know, very, very conservative society of Bengal. Ladies would not come into the Baitakhana, as they say. You know, we say lounge, we call it. You know, drawing room, we say that. Drawing hall, I say. So in the drawing room or the lounge, as you say here. So in the lounge, ladies won't come. Only the men folk will be sitting. And if any visitor comes, he'll be sitting there. But if the visitor is a very elderly person and he is a religious person, then he is allowed to go into the Antar Mahal. 
so where he can go into the ladies apartment that is called ladies apartment which is inside not everyone is allowed to go mind you not everyone can be taken inside at sri ram krishna saw all his devotees were seated and they are all taking food then he was invited inside so that the ladies can make pranam to him and then feed him there so there the ladies fed him there and he ate and then he came away so this was the but of course yam stood in the baitakana itself and he took his meals this is over now few days later yam repeats visit now you must understand whatever yam wrote these are all his visits to dakshineswar and to kashipur and wherever master took him that is one of the very important uh, interesting element we see in master if he has to go to any place he would not go alone he would tell other devotees also hey come with me come with me like that in a group going you know that also i am also doing that because i also like that in a group where you go there is a more joy there is a more merriment you know more the merrier as they say so when you go with a group it is nice everybody gets some chance of getting some type of experience in a group so that's why we invite yes come like that so when the master used to take people yam also he has taken many places so that's how all those thing narrations are recorded in the gospel that's why you will find every time that yam is visiting that shineswar yam is visiting this house that house to see master and with master he has been traveling in the boat all those things details will come so he was at 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon it was a sunday the master and he were sitting on the steps of the shiva temple if he had gone to dakshineswar and if he had not gone please make it a, a important itinerary in your calcutta trip you must visit dakshineswar it is such a beautiful campus even now when we go to india or particularly belumat we make it a point to visit dakshineswar and have the darshan of mother kali she is a very beautiful it's the image of mother kali is there that image is a living image and it has got the status of a shakti peetha on the modern days you know the 51 shakti peethas are worshiped all over the world they say their world means i'm telling the eastern part of asia part of india you will find there are many shakti peethas are there and for uh, mythologically there are 51 shakti peethas are there each shakti peetha signifying one bija mantra so in sanskrit alphabet there are 51 alphabets are there some say 52 but it doesn't matter but the accepted uh, number of alphabets are 51 so each alphabets are considered as one bija mantra and one one shakti peetha signifies one bija mantra so 51 shakti peethas are known are put in india say i have the area wise if you see india sri lanka then burma then afghanistan in the west and it goes up to afghanistan and to iran and it goes up to burma and uh, cambodia it goes so all these places there are some temples are called shakti peethas and if you go there you can actually feel the vibrations the energy vibrations if you stay of course for at least three nights that's why our in our older monks would always say once i went to jairambati and next day i have to come back to calcutta for important work and the senior swami there said what you are coming to mother's place and stay for one night you know three nights you have to stay cancel that appointment in calcutta stay here i won't allow you to go then of course when see their monks says what to do so i had to cancel and stayed there for three nights and he says three nights you stay then you can feel the vibrations generally in shakti peetha the vibrations of shakti emerge or become manifest more in the night time that's why in the kali worship is always done in the night time the night is considered as a more important and also when the moon is not there that means the new moon days that is called amavasya so amavasya days are precious for worship of 
the better for worship for Mother Kali. So that is one system is there. Of course, there is a Devi worship of uh, uh, white Devi worship, black Devi worship, two kinds of, in Tantra, two kinds of worship is there. So this uh, white Devi worship we find in mostly in South India, where the Divine Mother is worshipped as, as Tripura Sundari. The Tripura Sundari is called white Devi worship. And Mother Kali is considered as a black they worship. So this black goddess is worshipped during the nights and during the Amavasya. And Tripura Sundari goddess, that is also Divine Mother's another form. That form is worshipped during Purnavi, that is Purnima days, full moon nights. And in the daytime also you can worship. So that is how they divide these two Tantra uh, paths are there. Now, what I want mean to say is, in Dakshineswar, when you go there, there's a Mother Kali's main temple is there. Then there are 12 Shivalingas are there. Six, and then there is a separation, another six Shivalingas are there. So do you know that, that Lord Shiva's Shakti, that is his, his emanation or a manifestation as a Jyotir Linga in all over India was in number 12. So there are 12 Jyotir Lingas are there from Kashmir to Kanyakumri if you take that there are several places where that is only 12 places where the Jyotir Lingas are there. So the Shiva Linga is made of Jyoti, made of light. It is not made of stone. It is not made of any metal. It is made of light. Though the light, suppose it gets solidified, how it will appear, that is what it appears now. So the great sages of the past, the Shiva Bhaktas, they have gone to those places and they have actually experienced the Jyotir Linga. So that is why they are called Jyotir Linga. So they have realized Shiva in the form of a Jyoti, of light. So these 12 Jyotir Lingas are represented in the 12 Jyotir Lingas in Dakshineswar. So each Jyotir Linga, you can go there, you can pour water or milk and then you can say the Trayam Bakam Nijamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukami Bandhanam Mrityor Mutshi Mamrita Om Namah Shivaya. You always say that. So that mantra is to be told when you pour on Shivalinga and then you go around like that every Shivalinga. So 12 Shivalingas are there and each Shivalinga has got steps. So in one of the steps, Sri Ramakrishna is sitting and down below in another step, Yam is seated. And he is looking at Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna is looking down. And they were conversing. So what a beautiful uh, imagery you see for us to meditate. Just even close your eyes and think how Yam used to meet Sri Ramakrishna in the steps. And when you go there, that's what I was going to tell you. When you go there, when you go through the steps, sit down there. And imagine two steps higher, Sri Ramakrishna is seated there. And you are talking to him. What a wonderful feeling you know, it, it brings to you. So that's what he says. The master and he, he means Yam, were sitting on the steps of the Shiva temples, looking at the temple of Radha Kanta, which just opposite the Shiva temples is the Radha Kanta temple, just behind Mother's temple. Across the courtyard, the master simply looking at the Radha te Kanta temple, looking, he has not even reached there. Looking at the temple, the master went into an ecstatic mood. This is, Yam was a man full of emotion. Of course, he was a philosopher also. He has studied Indian philosophy as well as Western philosophy. He was good in discussing philosophy. Along with that, he had a great heart. You see, how he has noted the master's Disability is there. Now, that Hridayi was not there, who used to attend to Master, to all the things, because Master did not even remember how to put on his dhoti. When he started dancing and going into ecstasy, singing, etc., he would not even know that dhoti is coming down. It was Hridayi who was sitting there, who used to take care of him. It was when he went into a Nirvikalpa Samadhi, 21 days, Master could not come down to conscious plane. At that time, it was Hridayi 
who used to beat him and open his mouth and put some juice or some fruit onto his mouth and close it. He said, eat like that, he would say. So the body is a very, very highly sattvic body of master. You know, that body is very, very pure. Purity personified, we say. Sri Ramakrishna's body was 100% sattvic. There was no uh, sat, uh, tamas or rajas element there. Such a purified, pure, purest of the pure body. That body has to be kept intact means how much Thridayi was helping. And now Yam noted. See how Yam has noted this. Thridayi is no more there. He has been dismissed by the temple authorities from the service and he cannot stay anymore in the Rakshinesa temple and he has gone back to his place. Now, master is alone. He doesn't have any sevak. And without sevak, how much problem is there? You know, that's why when Balaram's mother used to come to him, you know, Balaram's mother is the sister of uh, uh, is uh, um, Premananda. His mother is the sister of Balaram Bose. So, due to that connection, she used to come to Dakshineswar often. And one day, Master is asking this lady, Hey, you got three sons. The last son, you give me. You give him to me. I need him, say. Then she says, and she's a very good devotee. She's Krishna's devotee. And she says, Oh, Master, you are asking my son for your service. I have no problem in giving this. But you must also give me something in exchange. Then I can give my son. Then he asks, What do you want? She says, at the time of my death, I should remember you. You should come and take me. You promise me that. Then I can give my son. And master promises that. And it happens exactly. You know, later, and she gives it her son, she tells her son, go and serve master. And he comes. And master says about this uh, Premananda that, this boy called Baburam, this boy full of sattva. So when he goes into Samadhi, how does he come back from Samadhi? Somebody has to tell some mantras in his ears. And that is how he used to teach Holy Mother also the same mantras. When Holy Mother stayed with him in the same room, at that time when she was just married, she was only 17 year old girl, she has come to him to stay with him as his wife. And she finds in the midnight, she gets up and sees the master is sitting in Samadhi. And he's unable to come back from Samadhi. Then she gets afraid whether the body will be lost or not. Then she asks, I have got a fear. When you go into Samadhi, I am afraid. Then she says, don't worry. I am teaching you this mantra. You repeat this mantra in my ear. I will come back to this normal state. So the same mantra he has told uh, uh, Baburam also. So Baburam used to do that. And he used to hold him also. You know, when standing time, if he gets samadhi, then master may fall down. So who is going to hold him? So Baburam used to, uh, used to stand there next to him and touch him. That touch of this boy will not disturb him. But anybody impure soul coming and touching means Sri Ramakrishna used to get get the feeling of terrible sensation of irritation in his feet. If anybody has touched him, so he should not be represented in a wrongly, you know. Some people say, no, because he was a Brahmin, he did not accept touching, you know, pranam. In Bengal, of course, the eastern part of India, the custom of doing pranam is you go to a holy man, touch his feet, particularly touch the big toe. It is said like that. Why? The big toe of Lord Vishnu is the place from which Mother Ganga came out from the heavens. So when Ganga came onto this earth, Prithvi, how did she come out? She could not just come into the earth. She had to come through the body of Narayana. So Narayana's big toe, she took it as a way out and she comes out from there. And she was coming with such a great force who had to hold her? Then Shiva says, don't worry, I will hold Ganga on my jatha. So he holds her. 
you know that bhagirath how bhagirath came and he brought ganga to this earth that's a big story so that that ganga comes through the big toe of lord vishnu so it is said the grace of great men come to you when you make pranam and touch the big toe so that is the system followed in the eastern india of course in south we don't touch the feet of the great man we say the holy man should not be uh, touched by us because we are not as much holy as they are and our unholiness may infect them so we should not disturb their mental uh, status like that we think and we do not touch that so these are different different regional compulsions are there you see so you don't need to follow some people used to ask me in south africa maharaj we went to belurmat and we stayed in the guest house and we met many swamis and many devotees and all the devotees touching the feet and making pranam but here we don't touch you so are we doing wrong thing you know seeing that they come and ask i said no you are not doing anything wrong this all depends upon the regional differences you know of the conceptions that are there so you don't need to follow exactly what bengalis are doing so a tamil you need not follow that in your tamil uh, place what is your system that you can follow so if i see my mother she is not touching the feet of any sadhu she will do pranam from distance so that you can keep it so that is your tradition you must keep it i would uh, resolve that issue like that otherwise no you can't impose one rule for everybody and you see in some places for instance in north india there are also very very hindi speaking people and very very devoted people you know they are fully emotional people and devoted people and they will come and fall at your feet but if you educated people they are little shy of making pranams so what they do they will just bend their body and take their hand as if they are going to touch your feet but they will not go below your knees up to the knee level they come and they will say particularly in bihar they will say uh, god eh? Eh? Pile, god lagi god lagi like that they will say so they will touch like that they won't even touch you but they come bring it like that so that's that's a system so if that is the system or some places they only say namaste put your two hands together palms together and say namaste that's that's also okay so we accept all types of you know greetings so there is no problem for us and if you don't say also you just say with your head turn your head this way you just acknowledge that i am before you that's enough for us mm-hmm. so you find that different systems of pranams are there now here he says that seeing the radha kanta temple master has gone into ecstasy this is something yam as wonderful and what he is telling see from the beginning in the gospel that we find this harmony of religions how it is coming forth and how it coming manifesting in so many places this is the fourth visit of yam to dakshineswar and there he is sitting with sri ramakrishna on the steps of the shiva temple and he is listening to sri ramakrishna ramakrishna is not talking to yam to whom he is talking he is talking to mother kali that is what yam is watching he is telling oh mother thou art everywhere and you are running this big universe and is telling every one is telling my clock alone is true and ramakrishna what he says his own words you see my watch alone is right the christians the brahmos the hindus the muslims all say my religion alone is true but mother the fact is that nobody's watch is right who can understand truly the this is a remarkable statement that we get highest philosophy is bringing that who can understand the divinity in proto because it is infinite you have got a mind which is finite this finite mind cannot grasp the infinite so without understanding this uh, limitation within us we are telling my watch alone is true if you see five people having watch five people's watch will show five types of time even one minute or a few seconds it will there will be difference and each one will say my time alone is right 
That's why now we go for GMT. <laughs> GMT is the alone. So everywhere you correlate with the GMT. What it is India, what is it? Five and a half hours. So difference from GMT. So you take the GMT as it. So GMT time alone is correct. Neither no other time is correct. So if you can grasp that, but with the infinite, the Divine Mother is the infinite, how can you say that she is available or she is present in this form only? You cannot say that. So he says, who can truly understand thee? But if a man prays to thee with a yearning heart, he can reach thee through thy grace by any path. There's a beautiful Tamil saying is there, you know, Unadarulale untal vanangi. He said, I am bowing down to you, O Lord, O Lord Shiva. I am bowing down to you. How I am bowing down to you? It is because of your grace that I am bowing down to you. With your grace, I am bowing down to you. With his grace that you have come to the ashram today. Not because you decided to come. If you think you have come on your own, it's wrong. By his grace, the grace has fallen on you. That's why we never care for the audience number, you see. Whether it is 5 or 2 or 50, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because if he wills, if his grace comes, then you come. So there is no type of lamentation on that. So he says, by her grace, you can understand. Oh mother, show me sometime how the Christians pray to thee in their churches. You know, this inquisitive, this concern, this wanting to know how the Christians pray in their church was a great thing. And he says, oh mother, because I am a Brahmin Hindu and whether Christians will allow me in their churches, that doubt also comes to him. And he says, suppose they make a fuss. Oh, this Hindu has entered into this Christ church. Oh, he should be taken out, send him out like that they may say. So he's afraid of that. So he says, suppose they don't allow me to enter the Kali temple again. That is that side one side and another side is here. When I come back to Kali temple, some of these Hindu priests are there. They will say, I will allow. Then what will happen? See, he's like a very childlike, you know. See, Ramakrishna feels like that. Well then, show me the Christian worship from the door of the church. <laughs> at least if I cannot enter the church, let me stand at the door. Today, you know, yesterday we went to a church. We went inside. We went to the a chapel inside. And we start, saw the starting of their program. The liturgy was being sung. We saw that. We heard that standing there. And so, nowadays you can enter the church. There was a time where anybody cannot enter the church. That was the time of Sri Ramakrishna's time. So he says, okay. And he's telling Mother Kali, I let me stand at the outside of the church door and let me know how they pray. How beautifully he puts it. And this happened to his own disciple Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda became a world-renowned monk. And he returned to India. What a wonderful reception were given from Lanka onwards. From Colombo onwards up to Almora, he was given rousing reception. When he came to Calcutta, Calcutta also gave a rousing reception to Swamiji. And Swamiji was so happy and he was nostalgic about the days when he was a young boy, how he used to go to Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineswar temple. And there, he never believed in Mother Kali's existence. And there, Ramakrishna made a leela, made a drama by which Naren started believing in mother and Ramakrishna became so happy. A my Naren started believing in, in mother. He used to be ecstatic joy. So that place Vivekananda wanted to go and he went with all the disciples, with all the people. He, they have come. A group of people were following Vivekananda and he, when he was about to enter the Dakshinasa temple, the priest came and stopped him said, you are not allowed to enter. Stunned. Here in this temple, in those steps of Kali temple, Narayan used to sit and get, he has attained Nirvikalpa Samadhi by the grace of Master. And in that very temple, today, he is not allowed. Though he is a monk, he was not allowed. Why? The Pandit said, because you have crossed the ocean. You are not eligible to enter the temple. Seven seas. 
you have crossed the ocean means you have become a mlecha mlecha you are so you cannot enter back that was the conser- conservative estimates of this place today also in some places we find foreigners not allowed like that to return but generally in dakshinesh temple everybody is allowed today we all can go there so even vivekananda his own disciple was not allowed to enter after say after 30 years i'm telling but think of those days 30 years back that is in ramakrishna's time how legible ramakrishna's fear was even if i go to church and come back whether these people will allow me and if they don't allow me to kali temple then i will lose my life kali is mother kali is my life where i shall go that is simple child's faith you know on mother kali and the fear of concern that was wonderful thing that our master has depicted here so with all this we will continue later next <clears throat> ओम निरंजनम निंजनम निंपाधृत विग्रह वै ईशावतारम परमेशमीट्यम तम रामकृष्ण शरसा नमा हरि ओम तत्सत्मकृष्णापणमस्तु